everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are going to be talking about kinky Halloween DIY ideas it is how you can use Halloween goodies as a way to facilitate kink scenes and use them as props or other tools in your activities. And I love this idea because I think DIY is such a good tool. You don't have to go out and buy super expensive purpose-made gear if you don't want to. I know many, many people that have entire kits and collections that are only made out of DIY materials and objects and they have such an amazing, fun, unique quality to them. I've also previously made a video before on DIY ideas coming from the hardware store but there are tons of options also in the Halloween store so take advantage of the season you can go ahead and go through any of your existing Halloween collection but also as you are shopping this year maybe keep an eye out for a few of these things and even after the fact once everything is on sale definitely look for a good deal and pick a few of these things up so with that being said let's start out talking about our different DIY kink ideas. I think number one, first of all, we have to look at pumpkins. I literally, last year on Halloween, I was going to the grocery store and they literally just gave me free pumpkins because they had so many. So you don't even have to go out and spend money for this one sometimes, it can literally be free. So definitely get yourself some pumpkins and you can do anything you want with the pumpkin externally, right? You can turn it into a jack-o'-lantern any of that but what we actually want from the pumpkin is the guts on the inside and i got this idea from carly deville who i recently had on the channel again to talk about locktober and they are the one that gave me this idea and carly talked about how the pumpkin guts can be a really fun sensory tool. You can use it for stepping on, playing on it with your feet. You can use it as a tool for sensation play because it's like kind of cool, kind of slimy, really goes with an overall wet and messy play scene. I've previously talked about how for Thanksgiving, you can use different Thanksgiving accoutrements as a way to have a sensation play and wet and messy scene with like pumpkin pie and whipped cream and cranberry sauce and all of that. You can also do that with Halloween with different candies and caramel and also including pumpkin. So pumpkin can be a really fun thing to play with that again can be free or low cost and also is kind of gooey and messy and weird it has kind of like a gross out factor to it but also it doesn't have to be gross out necessarily like if you are a pet player at least if you're a puppy like me pumpkin is usually recommended as something to give to dogs as a healthy treat and you can have that be part of your puppy play. Put some pumpkin in their food bowl, have them eat out of that. You can also turn the pumpkin into treats, especially if you're using like, I guess for this more, you probably wanna use like the canned pumpkin, but you can also kind of use the pumpkin for a fear play scene, right? Where like you have this gross slimy thing you can't see going down your back because you're you're wearing a blindfold, you're tied up, ugh, it feels so gross and get it off me. Like it can also be used that way too. So pumpkin just by itself, tons of ideas. And if nothing else, as you are scooping out the pumpkin guts, you can always turn those pumpkin seeds into treats to give to your pets or to have your littles while they are watching their favorite Halloween movie so goes the whole range from fear play to wholesome pet play in CGL so pumpkin already very very diverse as an option but going ahead and looking at what you can get from a Halloween costume store my next suggestion is prop knives and prop knives I think are a great thing to get if you want to play more with edgier kinks you want to explore knife play maybe you're not ready to get into an actual full-on sharp knife but maybe you don't really love of butter knives like butter knives they're not they're not visual they're not the same level of intimidating that like a prop knife would be so a prop knife from Halloween is a great thing to get because they're obviously 
props. They're very blunt, they're usually cheap, plastic, you can tell that they are not real knives. That is very, I think, reassuring to a bottom where they know, okay, this is definitely not real. I saw them buy it in the store. I know that we're gonna be safe here. So that makes it fun to play with. And even just having it as like a psychological prop in the scene, not using it on their skin or holding it to their throat or anything like that. You can't use the knife as like, it's a threat on like, the nightstand or the bedside table or on the you know they have the whole you have all the tools for the interrogation in front of you and there's a knife there you don't have to actually use the knife the suggestion of the knife mentally can be enough just to play with all on its own but if you do want to ramp it up a little bit this can be where you bring in another tool from the halloween store which would be fake blood i recently discovered that there is fake blood spray and i really feel like if you want to elevate your knife play scene and have it be a little bit more intense. You can spray fake blood over the knife. You can spray fake blood where you drag the knife across your partner's skin. Just take it up that next level. Have it feel a little bit more real with it, like that cool liquid getting sprayed on your skin, seeing the red blood, even though you know that you're safe, your blood hasn't been drawn, the knife isn't real. Again, it can make that scene just a little bit more intense than what you normally experience during a scene. I think it's quite fun to play with. Just be aware, fake blood can really stain a lot of things. So get your tarps out, get the sheets you don't care about out. This is not time to be playing around on your very expensive couch or on your $2,000 bedspread or whatever. Make sure you have some protection down and you're not wearing clothes that you care about if you start playing around with fake blood. But with that being said, let's move on to the next one, which would be getting a mask. And I like masks because they're very simple to incorporate into basically any other outfit that you wanna wear. And they are very customizable. They come in so many different styles. Everything from something like super, super realistic or like classic monsters like Frankenstein's monsters or Dracula or even Batman, all the way over to things that are more kind of like cartoonish in general. Like there's a really cool like skeleton wolf mask. I feel like that would be awesome for like a scene. I don't know how I would use it yet, but I'm gonna think of a way. <laughs> I'll figure out how to incorporate that one. But masks are really cool because unlike just wearing a regular costume where your face is exposed, but you're wearing a different outfit, I really feel like masks allow you to sink more fully into the role as the dominant partner or the top partner because you are having your usual field of view constructed. You sort of have this feeling of being separate from your everyday identity because of the fact you're wearing the mask, but also as the submissive or bottom partner, when your partner is wearing a mask, again, you can kind of consciously know, okay, I'm safe, this is them, we're doing a scene, but in the dark with the right mood and the right music and the right setting and the right props, like, your brain starts to think, is this really who I think it is? Are they really who I think they are, right? Or are they gonna go really far into this scary clown role or scarecrow or whatever else it happens to be? Like your brain starts to think, well, do I really know this person? Because you can't really make eye contact typically in the way that you're used to and that can't elevate the risk of a scene if you rely a lot on eye contact for communication during your scenes but it offers a way to really take on a new role with your partner and really get into it in a way that I think just wearing a costume doesn't always of course a costume can always elevate things but I think a mask by itself can do a lot a lot of work and they can be scary they can be silly they can be funny like imagine doing a scene with your partner where you're like tickle torturing them and like you're wearing like some really silly mask that like is just completely ludicrous and then you're tickling them and you challenge them to not laugh while this is happening while you're watching like somebody wearing a ridiculous like horse mask tickling you and it's like it's so bizarre but you can't help but laugh and you get punished because you're laughing like it can really be taken in any direction be that the fear play interrogation that direction or in the more silly lighthearted punishment direction as well so masks 
don't overlook them. They are a very, very good tool to have in your toolkit. Next up, we have caution slash warning tape for bondage. And I cannot take full credit for this idea. This idea comes from a scene I saw many years ago. I want to say it was maybe at Dark Odyssey Surrender. And it was somebody who did a suspension using caution tape. And I having been far away from the scene and not having done it myself, I believe what they probably did is they had another layer of bondage material underneath as the base, or they used just like a crap ton of this warning tape, but they had like the yellow caution tape completely all around mummifying their partner and then using that as the core part of the scene. I also, I want to say there was some kind of power tool that had been converted into a toy involved, like it wasn't sharp or dangerous or anything, it had been used for pleasure instead during the scene, but uh, it was quite visually and auditorially intense. It definitely took up a lot of the scene space in that particular room, but I always really loved that idea and I think mummification is such a great way to do like higher level bondage, even if it's just like on a table or on something else that's like sturdy, you felt like a bed, you can have your partner laid out, fully cover them in like saran wrap and then do the bondage tape over it or doing the caution tape over it. And that can create a very intense mental sensation without having to like do anything else. And I like the visual aesthetic of the caution tape because then maybe it's like a, maybe it's like a biohazard or it's like some kind of investigation because it's like, oh, we we captured this like alien creature and we're like wrapping it up to be transported because it's scary and dangerous you don't know what to expect from it or like maybe again it's a biohazard you have to wrap it all up to make sure you're not going to contaminate everything with the biohazard like you can really do a lot with this and even if you don't want to do full mummification with it right you can use it as like decoration you can have it as like clothing like maybe you have your partner where you put him in kind of like a literal bondage dress. I can remember from the 2010s when that was a thing. Have a bondage dress where literally just using the tape to make kind of like a form-fitted mini dress on your partner. You can also use it just to wrap up the ankles or the wrists and you can even tie on an extra lead around it if you actually make it pretty secure and then use that to lead your partner with the caution tape. And I think that it's just, it's simple, it's easy. Why not try it? I feel like it's good to experience at least once, at least if you haven't done a lot else with bondage tape before. I think it's worth exploring. And next up, of course, I did not forget about the service submissives. You are also definitely included on this list. I'd recommend getting some creepy serving wear. So we oftentimes think about Halloween stores as being places for costumes, but they are also a really great place to look for decorative disposable items that we can use in our kitchen be that serving platters or goblets or something you can even use to have like, maybe it has like a dry ice component to it. It's like a, a smoking cauldron. You can like serve stuff out of it. You can get really fancy, really expensive, or very simple with like some plastic goblets that have like a skeleton hand on them. If you wanna do something where you're like serving your vampire lord, a, a great feast of blood, then you can do that. If you want to have like a fancy dinner party with all different Halloween creatures, you can do that. You can do like a high protocol Halloween party using this, or maybe you want to just mix up your usual October dinner and a scary movie routine by adding a little bit of service submission in. Like maybe you get some serving where you get a nice platter, a nice tray, you get a nice cup or something. You serve your partner dinner from that. You bring it over to them on the couch or at their desk and you kneel by them while they eat from everything you brought to them. Maybe you have some Halloween snacks and hors d'oeuvres that you made for them, something kind of themed with whatever you're watching, whatever they're doing, or just the Halloween season. That is a good way to bring the spirit of the season into your everyday life and into your service submission. So that is what I recommend. Now next up, I recommend getting some Halloween makeup for sensation play. And of course, you can use makeup in the way that it is normally intended to enhance your role play or 
try out maybe some gender expression perhaps, but also I think there are lots of options in these makeup kits that make sense for a sensation player. I like doing body writing with some lipstick or maybe some like black lip gloss or there's a lot of like cream and grease paint that gets used as well. You can dab that on with like a sponge or a brush too and have that all over your partner's body. Don't forget about all the sparkles and body glitter as well. You can use for sensation play, body writing, it can just be a form of self-expression or being artistic, like maybe you want to paint a whole, you know, Halloween evening scene or a big pumpkin on your partner's back, or maybe you want to decorate them because they're going to be your Dalmatian for the evening and you want to give them big black spots using grease paint. Or maybe it's just humiliating and you want to write mean messages on your partner's back or all over them in red lipstick or pencil eyeliner or whatever else it is that you get from the Halloween section. And that is a fun way of exploring all those different things that can be more themed to Halloween or just kind of more general, but it's a good way to get some cheaper makeup, but also get it in different colors. You don't have to worry about like using your nice makeup for a scene like this or paying retail price these days for makeup because, oh man, Red lipstick is not cheap these days, I will tell you that much. So you can also use things like fake blood or Halloween slime and things like that too. It doesn't have to just be makeup here, but that is one of the key things I would look for. And even if you don't want to do a whole full production, head to toe, sensation play, body writing, wet and messy, whatever type scene with the makeup, you can even just use it as a way to subtly leave a message somewhere on your partner, like on their hip, on their butt, behind their ear, maybe even if you want to be a little bit more bold, just leave a little subtle message, a little subtle decoration there for them to take around with them for the rest of the day, even maybe when they're running errands or going to work, especially if it is on a more hidden location that can be just like a fun, savory little secret to have between just you and your partner. I think that's a very, very fun thing to play with. And now finally on this list, I do have a bonus freebie because it seems too obvious to have it be just on the main list. So I want to say that obviously you can get tons of role play costumes from Halloween, either from Goodwill, thrift stores, just getting it at Spirit Halloween or what have you. And that can be anything, right? There's animal costumes, there's vampire costumes, there's werewolf costumes, there's princesses, and there's even dominatrix costumes. Yeah, I have lots of feelings about those, but you can get lots of costuming materials and use that as a way to explore either gender expression or different kink scenes that maybe you want to explore, right? But you don't maybe want to actually go out and buy a really expensive proper costume yet. Like, yeah, you might you don't want to go to the dungeon wearing a Halloween costume because if it's not Halloween, it's going to be fairly obvious, but just playing around at home, maybe you want to know what it's like to be a, a naughty nurse, for example. You don't want to necessarily go out and buy actual real scrubs yet. Maybe, you know, a Halloween costume is enough to get the idea across. Or maybe you like having the cheesy, obvious Halloween costume in your role play. That's also totally valid. Or maybe things like clowns, for example. That's a natural Halloween option for costumes. It's also very popular these days, too, for some reason. If you want to explore clown kinks, for example, getting a cheap Halloween clown costume can be one way of exploring that. So that would be where I would go if you want to try out some Halloween costume ideas and really just like whatever sounds intriguing, I would go for it. If it's like the schoolgirl costume or the nurse, the doctor, the werewolf, whatever it is, try it, see how it feels. It might be cheesy and awkward and stilted, but it might also unlock a whole new world of role play for you. Even just looking at accessories for things, right? Like petticoats and angel wings and shoes. Those can all be things you can use in your broader kink role play in your broader kink scenes, even if you're not actually using full on Halloween costumes. So Halloween costumes, great opportunity. Anything with like a couple's costume, those can be really, really fun to play around with or just like wear to a Halloween party. You can kinkify them more if you want to with like 
harnesses and other things too or collars but really just Halloween costumes by themselves are like just just a good tool for exploration if you've been wanting to be more serious about your role play but haven't quite yet wanted to commit to the $300 custom medieval outfit that you've had bookmarked on Etsy for several months now at this point but but that being said, that is everything that I have to share for Halloween DIY ideas. I would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below. What have you used from Halloween for kinky DIY purposes? What would you recommend? Anything you want to say about anything I have on this list, personal stories, anecdotes. I would love to hear all your thoughts and feelings in a comment down below. If you did enjoy this, if you're not already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of different kink and BDSM related topics and finally if you want to support what I do the best you can do that is with patreon a link to that will be down below if you do already support me over there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until I see you all next time I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week bye bye